we're Native American and in our Native American culture. Our family has always been woven together very tightly within our tribes, within our family. You nurture and you take care of your elders and your children. Who is Melina? Joy. She's sunshine. We love each other like a lot. We, we stick together like peanut butter and jelly. I'm heading home from Rafford. And uh, we're just going down the road. There's a lot of traffic, just singing along. And then our mom called. Maya said, this tractor trailer's in front of us. He just about hit a woman on a red car. I said, well, you guys try to get as far away from him as possible. All I remember was like a tractor trailer coming over my side. And then I heard Maya scream. And then after that, I don't remember anything. And then I heard the crumble of their car. So it's about to the corner of my eye. I just saw this car just fly off the interstate up into the tree line. And the trees just fell like matchsticks. I mean, it was just unbelievable. I remember I was waking up and Melina wasn't in the car. I immediately said, find each other. It's time to wake up and fight for your lives. I ran around the car to see if she was in the ditch or anything like that, but she was underneath the car. I know the oil was dripping on her face, and I was like, oh, this car has to come off of her before it could just be fire. You tell 911, what, where's the address of the emergency? I need to report an accident where a vehicle has slipped on its side. The car is on top of the person. Do you know if there's any injuries, ma'am? Oh, it looks like they just pulled the person out. A gentleman had picked up the phone. He said, well, I've never seen anything like this before in my life. He said, one of them picked the car off of your daughter. In my mind, I had the strength of like the Lord like, helping me push uh, the car off of her. I know there's two nurses who stopped the car and came over, and I was like, how did my sister look? I t started taking a continuous pulse on her to check to see if she, her condition was going to change and asked her to just continue talking to me so I could check, check to see if anything was going to be different. I saw their facial expressions, and I knew it wasn't OK. Like, this was bad. Probably my biggest concern was whether any internal injuries, some sort of spinal injury, because she was not moving when she was on the ground. I tried to reassure her the ambulance was coming. My child's lying there dying, possibly. There's nothing I can do. I had to say, all right, Lord, please, will you allow her to stay here with me? Car two division, car two is on scene. As I was arriving on scene, I could see the vehicle. It overturned several times. One female, I believe she was a driver, obviously in critical condition. She had significant injuries to her. It looked like burns to her face, chemical type burns or liquid type burns. She was complaining of back and neck pains. The first thing that we wanted to check was make sure that she wasn't having any difficulty breathing or any burns in her airway. She was complaining of pain pretty much all over, of course, but you're always concerned about internal injuries, especially with an overturned and possibly ejected. Our protocol, we run a four lead, make sure that their heart rhythm is normal because a serious trauma can knock that out of whack as well. And IVs, because at the time we're worried about fluid resuscitation. They were able to scoop her up and, and get her an ambulance and get her on the way to the hospital fairly quickly. We knew that when she was coming in, she was going to be a Delta alert, so the highest level of trauma. She was aware of the pain that she was in. She had suffered burns on her face. Uh, she had burns on all her extremities as well as her torso. We had to get a secure airway. She was swelling around her mouth. That kind of airway swelling is something we're taught that can progress very fast. It can totally close off and make intubating from above almost impossible. I do remember you know, looking into your eyes and saying, we're going to have to put you to sleep and put a tube down your throat so that we can protect your airway. And she nodded to me, and then uh, we kind of went on our way to securing it. When I first got into the emergency room, I said, last name Richardson, two sisters, car accident. I am their mother. It was three women standing there, and the look on their faces went, we know. We got you. A lot of the things that we have to be most fearful of are the things that we can't see. Are there collapsed lungs? Does she have a liver laceration? Does she have a splenic laceration? I do remember looking with the ultrasound and there was maybe some free fluid in her abdomen, um, but since her vital signs were stable, um, we kind of go down that algorithm to send her to the CAT scanner uh, to find out what other in injuries were inside there. She was scared. Um, 
but she knew that she was in the right place and that we were the people there to help her. trauma doctor came and spoke to me and in that moment when he said the next 48 hours are very critical that indicates death for for a mother she was heavily sedated and she had a ventilator and everything was just swollen and swollen shut and you know I went over to Melina and kissed her you know what little piece of her body I could get to she had extensive burns to her face, which we knew about. And on the CAT scan that we had done of her abdomen, we did see some fluid, but not enough to take her immediately to the operating room. We decided to watch her very closely in the ICU. I remember being working on another patient and getting a call from the ICU, and they were asking those questions about the airway. What did it look like? Was there burns? Was there any um, like foreign matter in there that we should be concerned about? There was some like this yellow-tinged fluid, um, so I did tell them about that, and I think that's what prompted them to do a bronch that night. She had a lot of burns to her mouth, her face. It makes it very difficult for us to secure the airway. We had to use a netting, like a stocking, that we kind of wrap around the patient's face to secure it so that we won't lose the airway. Her blood pressure went down, her heart rate went up, and she showed signs of being in distress. I remember meeting her mother and explaining to her that her daughter wasn't doing well, the issue could be in the belly, and that we, it was time to take her to the operating room to see what was going on and get our answer. They came to me and they said, we're gonna have to go in and we gotta go in now. I was scared and I was in tears and I was like, do it, go. What we found was a small amount of fluid in her belly. We went through the intestines and we did not see any injuries to them. Her liver, her spleen looked normal. What we were concerned about, however, was a pancreatic injury. So we left drains, and if there were pancreatic juices leaking out, it would be able to leak outside of her and not cause any problem while her pancreas healed. Some of her burns were second degree and some were third degree. And so those areas, you're always concerned about infection for one. So you want to make sure that you're getting good wound care for this person in this time, but also making sure that you're able to kind of coincide with the rest of the team, which is what VCU is really known for. It's kind of working in a team approach. So it's great to have that kind of connection to where we could do all those things simultaneously while also taking care of her burns. With basically all burns, you know, the first part is you gotta cleanse the, we'll take off the old dressing and cleanse the wound, which is not the most fun thing in the world. You gotta make sure they're you know, medicated correctly and getting through the uh, practice of you know, how much medication do they need. You know, we don't wanna over-medicate them, we don't wanna under-medicate them. Melina vomited just profusely one night. It was almost like something off of the poltergeist. It was insane. I hear her alarms go off. I see that she's having a hard time. She was throwing up. Um, around her ET tube and her feeding tube. And because they were so body involving, she ran a very high risk of not only throwing up aspiration, but also throwing up her airway. If she had lost her airway, we would have had a very high chance that we would have to emergently trach her. They had to clean Melina up, and Cookie was so amazing with Melina that night. She kept Melina calm. Just trying to keep her calm, trying to keep her mother calm, to let them know it's like, it's okay, we got, we got the meds going, we're going to fight this, because we are all on the same page. We do not want to lose this airway. I didn't realize I had a broken toe until a couple of days later. But I was like, okay, my toe just hurts. Who cares? It's, it's just a toe. Like, my sister's in the hospital bed, unconscious. Like, that's more important than what my injuries are. It happened quickly. She started tapping on the side of the bed. I was like, get me a pin and a slam board. We've got, we've got motion. Let's go, people. Come on. 
even though she had the ventilator in, she was able to write to me and tell us what was going on within her body, uh, what was hurting, even though she was heavily sedated. We would check each day is to see if she has a cuff leak, meaning we can hear air between her um, vocal cords and the tube. That tells us like, okay, her swelling has gone down. If she's alert, she doesn't need quite so much suctioning. Um, she's on minimal uh, sedation or no sedation at all, preferably. These are all things listed to help pull the tube. Then it came time for him to pull it out really quickly. And I was like, all right, let's go, come on. Her eyes got real big and she started breathing. And I was like, keep it up, you're all on your own now. She had ortho injuries, she had trauma injuries, she's had the abdominal, had had the abdominal surgery, and then she also had the burn injuries on top of that. So our biggest barrier initially to mobility with her was pain. One of the nurses had written on the board, Melina wanted to get to graduate from Radford. Having goals and being goal-oriented is what gets three people through on a daily basis. And I think that helped her immensely. <laughs> Our speech therapy team worked with her for all of her feeding, swallowing, things like that. Our occupational therapy team really worked with her on her facial mobility. After a burn injury, the skin can get really tight and be very difficult to move if you don't start early range of motion. There in, in her hospital room, we sat down and kind of mapped out uh, what we wanted to do to fix her knee. She had been a, a very active, uh, athletic individual before her accident, and uh, our goal was to make sure that she returned to do all those things. Dr. Cheatham, oh my gosh, he's phenomenal. Love him. <laughs> This is a, a, a major injury where the ACL was completely torn off the femur or the thigh bone. The lateral collateral ligament was completely torn off the fibula or the small bone in the outside part of the knee. In addition to that, uh, she also had a tear in the meniscus as well, so obviously a, a very significant injury. And so those took time to reconstruct. The first time we worked with her after she had had her surgery, um, it was tough, very painful. But then the next day we went in and she was ready to try again. And we actually got her out in the hall in a wheelchair and she propelled herself around the whole unit in the wheelchair. I know at first I was in there in the hospital with Melina, like doing her wound care as well. And at first I was like, I can't handle that, like I just can't. And then like, well, you have to, like, you have to do it because she's coming home soon. Her plan of care was definitely for the, um, the infection control, Education, when home health education is one of your main tools that you use. Her sister was, in, and I, we both did her wound care, and her, her sister and her, I mean, they were marvelous with the wound care. I would do a skilled nursing clinical evaluation, listen to her, did her vital signs. Of course, in the wound care, we measured the wounds, um, looked at the progress to make sure they were healing nicely. And it came up that she possibly needed a ride there. You know, I volunteer with Goochland County. I, you know, let's find out what we can do. I'm the father of two daughters. And there's things in life that you don't miss, and graduations and weddings. And I'm like, uh, I'd be glad to, to do this. And so I volunteered. And sure enough, we were able to come up with the way um, to get her there. The Goochland um, Rescue Squad, they came and picked her up. and took her all the way in the ambulance to graduation. Maya pushed her up on the wheelchair, and Melina got up in her crutches and walked up, got her diploma. 
It's a challenging injury to come back from. She was a Division I athlete prior to. I think that helps her case tremendously. It was really about listening to Melina. I would ask her questions and, you know, getting her perspective on how she's feeling and what she's doing. If I had an agenda for that day, it may have changed. And we changed that plan of care um, to make it fit Melina's model. She came in every day trying to surpass her goal from the previous visit or the previous week. Um, she always wanted a challenge and I made sure to give her that and she, she always showed up. We connected on an emotional level and um, it was more than just addressing those physical ailments. She's an individual and we didn't treat her as a protocol. We treated her just as an individual. She wants to run her first 5k by the end of this year. We're a family that Loves great, loves deep, and fights. And we know what it is to stick together like a peanut butter and jelly sandwich. The future looks very bright and very positive because we've got each other. <laughs>